Hello everybody, this is Seneca Harris and I'm coming to you with another video commentary brought to you by the Urban Wire Media Network where we shine a light on issues impacting the urban community. Today I just want to come to you with everything that's going on in the media um, dealing with the tragic killing of George Floyd. I just want to come and um, offer some a glimmer of hope in this whole entire situation. Um, there has been news reports that have stated the other three officers that were involved in the killing of George Floyd have been arrested. And in addition to that, the charges for uh, Derek Chauvin have been upgraded to second degree murder. Now, Benjamin Crump, who is his 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 lawyer, and he's also been um, a lawyer for other high profile cases of this magnitude. You know, he was hoping that they were going to get those charges up to first degree murder. But with the first degree murder charge, you know, um, they have to go through um, them being able to prove that this this act of aggression was was premeditated so you know who's to say this this might change in the future but we have gotten um these other three arrested and and, and hopefully you know th that's just part of the the, the the battle you know so let's just hope that this goes to um to the to the courts and, and we're able to receive some type of justice for um george floyd's family um, we're going to go to a couple of videos just kind of outlining this. And um, as you guys know, this whole situation happened back on Memorial Day, May 25th. And uh, the Derek Chauvin was the police officer that was accused of uh, pretty much putting his knee down on George Floyd's neck after he was apprehended. And a lot of people were saying that this could be personal because there's there was some history that was alleged between those two. So um, it's just very tragic. You you know what I'm saying? And as you know, this has just caused like civil unrest all around the country. You know, there's been a lot of protests, a lot of rioting, a lot of looting. Um, and we're going to get into more of that on our podcast this this weekend. But. For the most part, the protests have been very powerful and, you know, people may feel a certain way about it, but these protests have finally uh, led the arrest for, of these, these three officers. So we're going to go to some video clips kind of outlining things. You know how I do. I like to, do, you know, just give you guys a background of things. And, um, and once we go through those clips, I'll come back with the rest of my commentary. Celebrations erupted across the country over the news that all four officers involved in arresting George Floyd are now charged in connection with his death. It's what protesters had been demanding all along. And while it might bring Floyd's family one step closer to justice, most agree it is also a step toward solving a much bigger problem. Here's Matt Doherty. This afternoon, a celebratory tone at the memorial where George Floyd took his last breath. Today, arrest warrants were issued for former Minneapolis police officers, uh, J.A. King, Thomas Lane, and Tu Tao. We got all four! All four officers involved now charged with felonies. Former police officer Derek Chauvin is now charged with second degree murder. The other three involved charged with aiding and abetting murder. What I do not believe is that one successful prosecution can rectify the hurt and loss that so many people feel. There's a lot more to do than just this case. The news came just hours after Floyd's son arrived at the spot where his 46-year-old father died. He knelt in prayer. I appreciate everyone for showing him some support and love. I thank y'all for that. Former President Obama held a virtual town hall today. He urged the nation's mayors to review police use of force policies. We both have to highlight a problem and make people in power uncomfortable, but we also have to translate that into practical solutions and laws that can be implemented. Floyd's family and friends will gather in Minneapolis tomorrow. It'll be the first memorial service in his honor. 
A public visitation and funeral are planned in Houston next week, where Floyd grew up. Matt Doherty, KHU 11 News. Let's now dig a little deeper into this upgraded charge against the former officer accused in George Floyd's death. Up until today, Derek Chauvin was facing third degree murder charges. That means it was not planned and there was no intent to kill. The maximum sentence, if found guilty, is about 25 years in prison. Now he's facing a second degree murder, which is more serious. Here's the difference. Under Minnesota's law, that means the murder was not premeditated, whether it was intentional or unintentional. The big change is the sentencing. If convicted, someone charged with second degree murder can face a maximum of 40 years in prison. We are breaking in to hear from the mother of George Floyd's daughter and that daughter, six year old Gianna Floyd. Let's listen in. Um, we're here today with Miss Roxy Washington, Stephen Jackson, Gigi Floyd, uh, Gianna Floyd, who's George Floyd's daughter. Um, on behalf of the family, we just like to say to America and to the world, thank you. Uh, thank you for being present with us in the moment. Um, thank you for caring um, and thank you for showing your support. Um, this, this battle, this fight is not over. And uh, today we just want to show the world that George Floyd is not just a name, uh, not just a meme and not just something to be chanted. Um, George Floyd was a real person. Uh, he was a good person and he had people that loved him. And so we're here today to show the world these are the people that loved him, especially this young lady here and this young lady here. And um, with that, I'm going to pass it to my law partner, Chris Stewart, and he'll say a few words. You know, the image that most of us have of uh, George Floyd is the horrible video that we've seen. Um, we've seen the anger in the streets. We've seen so much violence. We've seen beauty also. We've seen people standing up and speaking up, and we've seen massive changes happen across the country. But what we really wanted the world to see is the beauty of their child, the beauty of Gianna, who's going to be taller than me soon, just like our dad. The beauty of Roxy, who is holding up strong throughout this, and the actual situations in life that these things affect. It's not just that someone passes and people are angry in the street. It affects people's actual lives and their futures. So a father was taken. You've seen Ben, who we're working with and, and that team, a brother and sister lost another brother. And here, I want to introduce you to Roxy and to Gigi. Uh, I don't have a, a lot to say because I can't get my words together right now. But I want to everybody to know that this is what those officers took for. At the end of the day, they get to go home and be with their family. Shiana does not have a father. He will never see her grow up, graduate. He will never walk her down the aisle. If it's a problem she's having and she needs her dad, she does not have that anymore. I'm here for my baby. And I'm here for George because I want justice for him. I want justice for him because he was good. No matter what anybody thinks, he was good. And this is the proof that he was a good man.
It, it really don't make no sense. We all seen it. Playing this day. Y'all in here with cameras for a reason, to record what's here so you can have it for later. So you can have proof of what happened today. Right? Am I right or wrong? So you can have footage of what happened today. Right? And when you when you post that footage on your on your news station or whatever, you expect people to believe what you're posting and what you video was real, right? Am I right or wrong? Correct. Why is it not that simple when somebody's getting videoed and getting murdered? Why is it not that simple? Why do we have to see her pain? Why do we have to see a, a, a daughter getting raised without her father? But you know what? It's a lot of stuff you said that he gonna miss, that I'm gonna be there for. I'm gonna walk her down the aisle. I'm gonna be there for her. I'm going to be here to wipe your tears. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to be here for you and Gigi. Floyd might not be here, but I'm here for her. I'm here, I'm here to get justice, and we're going to get justice for my brother. We're not leaving. We're going to keep fighting. We're going we're gonna to put my brother to, uh, to we're going to send him home in, in, in beautiful ways this week. But I'm telling you, we are not leaving. We demand the justice, and I'm tired of seeing that. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to see her hurt every day like this. We need justice. We demand it, and some kind of way, God damn it, we're going to get it. Thank y'all for coming, but this shit has to stop, man. It has to stop. Uh, you know, we literally flew up here from Atlanta, where today the district attorney indicted six officers who were involved in beating those college students and tasering them. The district attorney, the mayor, and our chief of police took action in under a week. Fired and indicted. But yet here we're still waiting for the arrest of the other officers. Why can't that be a blueprint of what should happen in these officer involved situations? The pictures last forever. But justice never truly comes in this and time and time again we're fighting these cases. Everybody at home is wondering why riots are happening, why protesting is happening. It is because situations like this do not get addressed. No one is saying that every police officer out there is out to try and kill somebody. But when someone does do something, when someone crosses the line, they have to go through the system and be held accountable. How is that not fair? And it always happens to African Americans. And the end result is this. And it's a circle because then it's held against a young African-American child when they don't have a parent, when they don't have a father. Now we're somehow less than equal because we're missing that dad. Well, this is going to be the reason that Gianna is missing that dad, through no fault of her own, through no fault of his. So this helps that cycle. And it has to end. And we plan on fighting until the end to make sure that that happens, um, even with new policies being instituted, with the investigation that was announced today. Uh, we, hate, we hope to see further steps um, so that this never happens again. The plea for justice is simply this. Dr. Martin Luther King said, he who passively accepts evil is as much involved in it as he who helps to perpetrate it. He who accepts evil without protesting against it is really like cooperating with it. You know, T.I. on that video, what we saw was torture. Reverend Jackson, what we saw in that video was inhumane. Martin III, what we saw in that video was evil. And so America, we proclaim as we memorialize George Floyd, do not cooperate with evil. Protest against evil. Join the young people in the streets protesting against the evil, the inhumane, the torture that they witnessed on that video. We cannot cooperate with e evil. 
We cannot cooperate with injustice. We cannot cooperate with torture. Because George Floyd deserved better than that. We all deserve better than that. His family deserved better than that. His children deserve better than that. Steve, all George wanted from life is what any of us want. As Thomas Jefferson said in the Declaration of Independence, the unalienable rights endowed by our creator, Tyrese, to life, liberty, and the pursuit to be happy on this earth. That's all George was asking for, like any and all of us. But he was denied those rights. And we will seek justice in his name. We will all unite it as a people who are God's children seek justice in his name. But beyond the specific justice, in his case, Chris, the prosecution of the four individuals who deprived George of his life, we seek a broader, more transformative justice. Reverend Al, a more just system of policing. Kevin, a more just treatment of people of color. Chris, a more just criminal justice system. In essence, what we are endeavoring to do, Brandon, is what my personal hero, Thurgood Marshall, said. Make the, constitutional, make the Constitution real for all Americans. You see, Justice Marshall said, the basis of the Constitution is simply this that a black baby born to a black mother, the most uneducated black mother, the most inarticulate black mother, the most impoverished black mother, has the same exact rights as a white baby born to a white mother, the most educated white mother, the most articulate white mother, Taz, the most affluent white mother, just by virtue of that baby drawing its first breath as an American. Now, Justice Marshall said, Reverend Jackson, I know that's not the case in America today, but I challenge anybody to say, Tony, that that's not the goal we're fighting for. He said, I challenge anybody to say, that's not what makes America the great beacon of hope and justice for all the world to marvel. So when we fight for the George Floyds of the world, but more importantly, when we fight for the unknown George Floyds of the world, when we fight for the Trayvon Martins of the world, when we fight for the Terrence Crutches of the world, when we fight for the Michael Browns of the world, when we fight for the Alton Sterlings of the world, when we fight for the Philando Castillos of the world, when we fight for the Jamar Clarks of the world, when we fight for the Eric Gardners of the world, when we fight for the Sandra Blands of the world, when we fight for the Amar Aubrey's of the world, when we fight for the Breonna Taylors of the world, when we fight for the Natasha McKinney's of the world, when we fight for the Stefan Clarks of the world, when we fight for the least of these, what we are really doing is helping America live up to its creed. We are, what we are really doing is helping America be the great beacon of hope and justice for all the world to marvel. But most importantly, brothers and sisters, what we are doing is helping America be America for all Americans. What we want, T.I., is 
not two justice systems in America, one for black America and one for white America. What we endeavor to achieve is equal justice for the United States of America. And George Floyd is the moment that gives us the best opportunity I have seen in a long time of reaching that high idea that this country was founded on. Thank you so much. This is the plea for justice. On behalf of the family, the children, we will get justice. We are committed to it. All right, I'm back with the rest of my commentary. Um, I just wanted to give you guys an, um, an outlook of what has happened in the um, past couple of days with the arrest of the three other officers that were involved in this. Let's just, let's just call it what it is. This was a public lynching, you know. And what, what I feel about it is, is like, this is exactly why we as black people, we have to make our voices heard. Not only with protesting, but we have to make our, our, our voices heard through voting. And we just had our primaries here in Indiana um, this week. And, you know, my, my hope is the people that were out there protesting, which that's all well and good. I hope that these same people will get involved in the political process and vote this upcoming November. You know, if you're, you know, if you're not happy with what's going on in your local government, if you're not pleased with your representatives, it is time for us to let our voices be heard. The protesting is just part of it. You know, it's time for us as a people to quit being so docile. We need to stop being so submissive and we need to stop laying down and allowing these people to do us any kind of way. You know what I'm saying? It's sad that this man's family is, has, has to go through this. It's sad that, you know, his death had to, to take place like this. This this was just, like I said, a public lynching. You know, there's, there's no other way to put this. But hopefully there will be some good that come out of this. Because we, me personally, I have not seen anything like this in my lifetime. The closest thing that I saw to this protest is back in 92 with the entire um, Rodney King protest. Um, situation where you know with the la riots and all that stuff and i was kind of young so i, I didn't i, I kind of remember seeing that stuff on tv but i didn't understand the magnitude of what was going on but we have to really uh come to a reality that racism still exists in this country and until black people start to come together and i'm talking about the the you know the working class black people because you know what these black so-called black celebrities have really been exposing themselves. And we're going to get into that in another video. I'm not going to do all that in this video, but this, this whole tragic situation has really woke a lot of people up and um, this entire year in general with everything with the coronavirus and um, the killings of um, Ahmaud Arbery and here in Indianapolis, we had Sean Reed that got killed a lot of stuff is just really happening that has really uh, revealed people's true intentions and, and how they feel about the black community. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, everybody was talking about 2020 vision. That that saying is so true because this year has been the year where so many people have been exposed, you know. So I just wanted to get on here and just let you guys know about that good news. You know, we're going to have to keep Keep our uh, foot on these people, you know, on these politicians. We can't let these people get by with what they've been getting by. These politicians, law enforcement, we have to get out there and keep letting our voices be heard. Get to them ballot boxes um, in November. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm a strong believer that black people should also protect themselves. You know, um, we are citizens in this country. Regards to, you know, the powers to be, we are citizens of this country and we deserve to be able to exercise our Second Amendment rights because with all this is all this going around, we need to be able to protect ourselves and our families and our communities, you know, and I just wish black people would get on one accord. And it's good seeing that the, the younger generation is taking up that mantle 
um, as far as, you know, uh, civil rights is concerned. It's, it's really good. And I think it's up to the older generation to kind of help coach these younger people. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think a lot of them, their hearts are in the mind, right place, but they're lost out here. And they're just trying to feel their way, way through this. And they know that they, they want to change. But I think it's up to the older generation to kind of coach these young people. You know what I'm saying? Kind of give them support. Give them, you know, uh, just a, a road map of success. You know what I'm saying? But I'm really surprised. I'm really proud of these young people getting out here, letting their voices be heard, putting in that work. And, you know, a lot of younger people are actually be becoming more interested in the political process, which that gives me a lot of hope for the future. So I want you guys to let me know what do you think about this whole situation? Like I said, our podcast this weekend. We're going to cover all these elements because there's just so many elements when it comes to this. Um, I just didn't even know where to start. So I just want to put this video together and let's have a greater conversation. We'll just come together in love. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's okay for people to voice their opinions, but we all need to be respectful for one. And for two, uh, you know, we just need to uh, get serious about the times that we're living in. We can't shuck and jive. We can't be out here cooning. We can't be out here trying to um, tiptoe around these issues. We got to call it what it for what it is. It's white supremacy. And we have to not only call it out, we have to do whatever necessary steps that it takes to to uh, dismantle this system. Because at the end of the day, if this system, if we're going to have to dismantle this system because we can't keep going ahead with things the way that they are and expecting some type of change. So go ahead and let me know what you guys think and we will come back to you with a couple more videos. Um, I'm going to be doing a video about these black celebrities and why black capitalism is not the answer. So we're going to talk about that and then the upcoming show this weekend we're going to talk about a lot of different things. So until next time let's take care of each other, let's love each other and we'll see you in the next video.